So, have any questions on the tip of your tongue for you, um, if any, 30. I'll hand over to David. Thanks very much. Thank you very much, Sam. It uh, makes me feel very old, a lifetime of, uh, of experience. I hope there's, hope there's a little bit more left. Um, th th this is a very formal setting, actually, for what I, what I hope is going to be um, interactive. I haven't prepared a, a talk because I very much want to, to hear your views and your, your questions. Presumably, you're here because you have some level of interest in pursuing a, a career. Perhaps some of you are already in, in animal law, in a animal advocacy more generally. So I'd, I'd be very interested to hear what your views, what your, what your aspirations are. Maybe I should start, however, with a kind of a, a brief um, autobiography of, of my, my involvement with, with animal law and animal protection more, more generally. It started, started quite young when I was 18 between school and university. I initially volunteered just helping out at the RSPCA uh, dog home in, in Cardiff and then they sacked the man address because she wasn't very good and I, and I took over the day-to-day the -day running. Um, for a couple of months. Uh, it was a really hot summer. We were overrun with, with dogs and it was probably the hardest I've ever worked in, in my life actually, trying to combine the, the physical work of you know, clearing out kennels and so forth and, and, the, and the office work and having to make some, some really tough decisions as well about, about putting, putting dogs down because we were, we were overrun. And I, I can still remember all these years later some of those, some of those dogs. Um, that, was, that was pretty tough. Um, I then became a kind of, I, I did a law degree and, and so forth, became a solicitor, did the traditional solicitor thing, um, specialising in civil litigation, became a partner in a, in a West End firm, doing a kind of whole variety of civil litigation. And I think that's, that's really stood me in good stead because the law, although we all specialise these days, the law is becoming more and more niche, more and more specialised, um, you can't compartmentalise law completely. Uh, and what you learn about trust law, for example, might, um, it's some, some years ago when I was working for, for Child Poverty Action Group, um, we established in a, in a judicial review that the High Court had the power to make what's called a protective cost order, which is where, in a public interest judicial review brought by, a, brought by an NGO, the court has the power to say that even, even if you lose at the end of the, of the day, the uh, public interest charity bringing the case will not have to pay the government's cost and that's or will only have to pay a limited amount and that's really important we based that argument because there was nothing specifically in the in the in the court rules on on trust law so knowledge about trust law was used in, in an area that you might think was was completely different um, after private practice I went, went to to work for child poverty action group completely different different kind of um, culture um, but, but really fascinating. Child Poverty Action Group deals with social security and, and related law, housing law, immigration law, those kind of areas. A lot of test cases against, against the government in the higher courts. Um, in this country, I was really lucky when I was there. We had six cases in the, in the House of Lords of the Supreme Court, as, as it is now, loads in the Court of Appeal, European Court of Justice, European Court of Human Rights. A really, really fantastic experience. But more than that, using the law in, in a holistic way. So um, CPAG is a, is a campaigning organization, so using the law at every stage of campaigning, writing articles, doing case reports, did a, did a column for the Law Studies Gazette, um, teaching, campaigning, um, all the whole gamut of, of using the law, drafting, drafting legislation. And then animal protection had always been my, my passion, the area I really wanted to, to get into. So I took that experience and set up my own um, set up as a, as, a, as a sole practitioner and then worked as a, um, as a consultant for campaigning animal protection organisations, principally uh, BUAV, now uh, Cruelty Free uh, International, again using the same kind of approach as did it at, uh, at C CPAG. So, law in, in all, its, um, all its manifestations. And uh, I'll be talking some more about that at my, uh, at my, at my talk tomorrow. Um, so that's, that's essentially, um, that was my, my career for, for a long time. Um, on a kind of voluntary basis, I was involved with the, the RSPCA. I was a trustee and then, then chair for a, for a couple of years and now a trustee again, trustee of Compassionate World Farming um, as well. Um, 
and then um, earlier this year, along with, uh, with the ED, um, finally realized what had really had been a long-held dream of mine, but never, never quite happened for a, for a variety of reasons. We set up the UK's uh, first animal protection law firm. It's called Advocates for Animals. Um, the UK, although it's kind of seen as, as being kind of quite, quite forward-thinking with animal protection, generally animal law uh, is actually kind of very much behind the curve. There are, as, as some of you may know, the, in, the, in the States, there's an organization called um, Animal Legal Defense Fund, which has been doing this, this kind of thing for a long time in Canada's animal justice. Um, the UK has been, been quite slow. Um, and it's, uh, it's, it's really interesting, actually, how we've only been going since, since March. It's generated a lot of interest, not just in this country, but but around the world, and as well as the kind of traditional larger organizations that you, you will all know and know about for whom we've, we've done, done some work, that lots of smaller organizations that come out of the, the woodwork, because so they they've now feel that they've got, got somewhere to go. Um, people have this, this view of lawyers, which is, which is uh, very well based, that you know, lawyers are, are prohibitively expensive, and they, they can be, and, and, and very often are. Um, we have to charge, but we, we charge considerably below commercial rates. And I think people like the idea that, you know, w we are on their side. Of course, we have to give objective advice, but we're trying to find solutions. Law lawyers, I think, are, are exceptionally good at, at identifying problems and why something won't work. It's very, very easy to do that. And, and if, you, if you advise client, your client not to do something and they don't do it, of course, you can never be proved wrong. Um, whereas w the approach that we try to take is a more more creative approach, always hard-headed, always objective advice, but we try to to find solutions, and that's and that's campaigning law really. Going back to my CPAG days and uh, working as a consultant for for various organisations. So that's my autobiography. I'd, I'd be really interested to to learn what some of you are doing, what your aspirations are, and what, what questions you have. If you if you're interested in doing animal law yourselves, what, 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 what questions you have? Yeah. Um, so, uh, I suppose I just really wanted to ask you, um, quite basically, what kind of careers you can pursue with animal law. Um, at my university, it's not a module that's offered, but it's certainly something that I'm interested in, so I'm not, I've not really got any access to lawyers or so on so forth that could tell me what kind of careers that I could have in that area, so if any you know, advice you could give. Yeah, I mean, one, one of the problems is that for very few universities, I think, I think it's still the case, do, do animal law, um, which, which is a shame. It's a shame for, for obvious reasons, but also it's, it's a really interesting and challenging intellectual area of law. I think people kind of tend to have this idea of animal law that it's, it's kind of very soft and furry, if you excuse, excuse the pun, um, and that it's not, you know, it, people think of animal law as, as cruelty cases, which are you know, largely fact-based. There's not a huge amount of law normally that can be. Um, but in fact, the, the kind of law that we do is, is incredibly interesting, um, as well as we think being, being important. It's um, intellectually stimulating. It's international. Um, I think something like two-thirds of UK animal law comes from the European Union. And whatever happens with Brexit, the European Union law is going to feature large in domestic animal protection law for a long time. Then you have international treaties like the OIE, CITES, uh, the World Trade Organization, is, which deals with the, with the trade of goods. And animals are regarded as goods. When can you have restrictions on trade? Oh, again, I'll be talking about that tomorrow. Um, some of the WTO case law is, and some of the European Union law case law can be really, really, really tough. But that makes it very interesting, and that you know, the more complicated legislation is, then the more scope there can be for finding ways around it. You know, the the the, the, the challenging law, if you like, is the one that's, that's very clear in in, in 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 saying what you don't want it to say. If it's a more complicated, there's an EU law is can be really really complicated. Then you can you can you can you can quite often find find ways around it. So. In terms, of, in terms of careers, um, it, it's not easy. My, my path, I, I didn't do animal law at, uh, at, at university. I um, volunteered for the RSPCA, I volunteered for the cruelty-free 
International. I became a trustee there. I did a lot of, of um, legal work for them uh, as, as a volunteer. And th that was the way that, that I got in. There are some, some organisations are big enough to, to have lawyers, like the RSPCA, um, Peter Stevenson at Compassionate World Farming, who, who you may have heard, heard this morning. Um, th there are, um, there are organisations who have lawyers, but not, not that many. And a, and a very good way in is, is to start, start doing voluntary work. There are some, some law firms that have, that do public law, so judicial reviews, freedom of information, that, that kind of thing, um, they will act for animal protection organisations, but it's, it's, um, it's, it's quite niche, it's quite small, and therefore if you, if you, if you really have a passion, um, then uh, I, I think the way, way to do it is to, is to try to get involved with an organisation, you know, maybe, maybe in a, in a non-lawyer role, or maybe as a, as a volunteer, prove your worth in that way and, and help them to identify when there is a legal solution because people, lay, lay people, don't always recognise where there may be a legal solution to, 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 a, to a problem. So I think part of, of that is, is the educative process of saying, look, you know, the law is not perfect, we all know that, but there are legal techniques that you can use which, um, which, which the organisation may, 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 may not have thought of. So no, no easy answer, I'm afraid, to, to getting, but I think, I think it is growing. I think there are more universities than now do animal, animal law. It is um, becoming recognised as a, as a serious and proper area of, of legal study. A Law produces a, a journal, which is, which is very good, as you, as you as you may know, so an, an animal protection is generally moving up the public consciousness. I, I would I would say in, in relation to to Brexit, there was a time around the the sentencing debate about Article 13, where it, you know you, you couldn't hear a government minister uh, talk about Brexit without saying, "Oh, of course we want to protect animal welfare standards when we leave the European Union." Now, now one can be cynical about why they, why they were doing that. Um, but it's, it, it is move, moving up the public consciousness in, in the way that in, the environment has, has generally. Hi. Um, in terms of what you're saying about like volunteering for smaller charities when yeah. starting out, how much experience do you have to have to do that even? Like, do you have to be like fully qualified lawyer or do you have like some knowledge of the law? Is it dependent on? Yeah, no, I, th I think it depends. I mean, I think if you, do, do, do you have, have you, have you studied law? No, but I was looking to do the LPC. Okay, so, so, so it's con converting over to, yeah. 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 Um, I, I mean, I think an, any grounding in law is, 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 is useful. Um, if, you're, if you're fully qualified, of course, that, that helps because then you can then say, oh, I am a solicitor, I'm a barrister, and that immediately gives you the status doesn't necessarily give you more knowledge or ability, but it, but it gives you the, a recognisable status. But I think, um, you, you know, if you, have, if you have a legal background, if you, or even if you just have the, the aptitude and the interest and transferable skills from whatever it is that, that you can study. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't allow the, the absence of a kind of formal um, qualification to, 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 to put you off if it's, if it's what you feel you really want to do. Yeah, there's the there's the opportunity for the plug. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah. Um, forgive me, because I I know you've only just started advocates for animals, yeah. so I don't know that much about it. Um, but I'm interested in policy. Um, I was just wondering, like, what? I mean, again, I'm. You don't know because you've only just started. But like, are you more dealing with sort of individual cases brought to you? Are you working with working groups? Are you working with NGOs with lobbying, or is that not really what you're? Yeah, no, it is. It is very much. I mean, we 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 generally say we we don't act for individuals. Actually, we we do they get quite a lot of queries about people that have you know problems with their vet or neighbours or or whatever. Um, we we don't get involved in those cases unless we think there's a really important point of point of principle um, but 
Well, I, absolutely, in terms of, of getting involved on, on, the, on the policy side, so kind of interactive with the, with the clients. Um, and, and so using the law, or helping, helping them to use the law in the, in the broader sense possible. And that means going back to you know, the very beginning of the process, like finding out information from public bodies, uh, undercover investigations, but then helping with the whole kind of um, policy and, and legislative process, um, which, which can be very long and uh, difficult on, on, on occasions. Uh, but there is, there is a, a legal input. Um, I, think, I, I think at that stage, an important legal input because Partly because you know lawyers are, are supposed to be good at articulating arguments and pers persuasion, which is why there is a disproportionate number of lawyers in in, in the House of Commons. It, it used to be about a sixth, I think, of of MPs were were you know what that says about the House of Commons. But it's you know you you you, you we are supposed to have the the advocacy skills and also kind of understanding parliamentary procedure and European Parliament procedure and so yeah I, I, absolutely getting involved as early as possible rather than simply reacting at the at the end of the process to a to a problem so, Sam um, yeah. it may be that the answer is everywhere but everywhere where, where do you think um, the biggest lack of legal talent or legally qualified people who want to work for animals is? Is it in solicitors' firms or is it working for NGOs or is it the fact that there aren't any barristers who will take on cases pro bono um, for animals? What, what, like, where do more law students need to aim to go if they want to try and make things better for animals, if they're not just going to go where there are already enough people working on the job? Right. Uh, I mean, there are barristers who, who will do pro bono stuff, um, and, and solicitors too. So it's slightly more difficult for solicitors if they if they work uh, work for a firm. They're obviously dependent on on you know the firm's policy, but but there there are solicitors who who will um, who, who will do pro pro bono work. Um, in terms of where where you, you can make the most contribution as a solicitor or a, or a or a barrister. Um, it's quite a difficult one. I mean, I, I would probably say um, solicitor because, um, again, going going back to to the point I was just making, at, at you know, getting involved um, as early as possible in the in the work of the of the organisation of the of the client. Whereas barristers generally, obviously, do 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 advocacy, or they they may get asked for. For legal advice, but they they tend to be instructed at quite late in the process. Whereas as a solicitor, especially a solicitor attached to or doing work for a voluntary organisation, you have the opportunity to try to to sh help shape the overall campaign and, and achieve the objectives from you know with, with the with the legal input. So uh, I certainly wouldn't discourage anyone from from wanting to be a, a barrister. But if you really want to specialise. Um, it would probably take you quite a long time to reach the point where you can say that you are primarily an animal protection lawyer if you're a barrister, whereas with a solicitor it's probably you know, still not easy, but probably probably easier because just simply because of the nature of the of the of the work. But uh, you know, as, as I mentioned earlier, you don't you don't have to be either to you know legal skills picked up as a law student or something something similar can be can be very useful. Um, you know, and some of the kind of non-lawyers who, who get involved in law, um, you know, in my experience, can be can be a lot better than, than some of some of the uh, some of the qualified um, people that one one one, one comes across. So it's, I, th I think it's the, the interest and the and, and the passion that I think mar marrying the the passion with the with the intellect, but but also un understanding the intellectual challenge, but also understanding that. Uh, the passion leads to creativity, and that's 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 really important. But but also, you have to be realistic, you know, in in advising. You have to advise what the law is, or what it could reasonably be seen to be, with you know, putting the evidence together and putting the arguments together to very best advantage, rather than what you would like it to be. You don't do any, anyone a service by 
you know, telling them the law is X when it, when it just because you want it to be. Can I ask how, how many of you are, are interested in possibly pursuing a career in, in animal protection law? Wow, crikey. That's our uh, re uh, recruitment yeah. sorted for the, ne <laughs> for the next, next, next few years.